and Aaron Rodgers finished as the second highest scoring quarterback of the week. That's because he finished behind Russell Wilson. Yes. Is this the year that Russell Wilson is going to finally win the MVP? Unfortunately for him, he has run in to a couple of buzz saws over the years. The same year that Russell Wilson was having his greatest years, he's run into other great players, whether it's Cam Newton, whether it's Lamar Jackson. This is shaping up to be Russell Wilson's year. He typically doesn't start the year off as hot as he did. First game of the year, Russell Wilson, 31 of 35, 88.6% completion percentage, four passing touchdowns, zero interceptions, 31 points on the day, depending on what your format is. Russell Wilson, man, so unreal, playing out of his mind. And I brought up a statistic because I was looking it up. I like to deep dive oddball statistics. That's one thing I'm really into. And I found one on Russell Wilson. Over Russell Wilson's eight-year career, this being his ninth, Russell Wilson has never had more than two games in a single season where he threw for more than four touchdowns in a game. To put perspective on this, I brought up that Daniel Jones last year did it three times. Even... Uh, Lamar Jackson last year did it four times in one season, but Russell Wilson's never done it more than twice in a single year. He opens up the year with four passing touchdowns. He's one away from tying his season high, and I think this is the year that it's going to happen. We always talk about let Russ cook, right? We hear that narrative. Well, Russell Wilson had 35 pass attempts in this game. His career average is about 32 and a half, so it's a slight uptick. And I think one of the big advantages here is we're seeing how the usage of Chris Carson is taking place. Um, that that was one of the most major changes in this game. Chris Carson, 6-for-6 six six, uh, in, in targets with receptions, 45 yards receiving, and a score, um, two of them as a receiver. So uh, incredible, incredible evolution for this backfield. And I told you guys on the last... I'm Outrage Podcast. These guys on these one-year deals, you just have to pay attention to who's out there and you have to go get these quality guys. I had a guy jump my ass on Twitter and go, oh, you can't you can't compare Chris Carson and Kenyon Drake and Aaron Jones to, to uh, you know, Dalvin Cook or Joe Mixon or whomever. He goes, they're not elite like that. Like, what do you mean they're not elite? Look, Aaron Jones is objectively elite. Aaron Jones is incredible. Again, this is a Green Bay offense that had very few weapons, and defenses had no answer for Aaron Jones. That matters. When a defense is aware of your best player and they can't stop your best player, your best player is pretty good. That's a fact. So they they jumped me for that. They were saying Chris Carson's not good. Look, Chris Carson's been fantastic over the course of his NFL career so far. And then what does he do? In his, his first game here, yeah, underutilized in the running game. Six carries, 21 yards, but used in the passing game. Look, they threw the ball. Seattle threw the ball 67% of the time in this game. That's very different from the Seattle Seahawks' typical average. So very impressive uh, the way that they flipped the script. And if this continues, this could be such a substantial year for Russell Wilson, a massive year for Tyler Lockett, a massive year for DK Metcalf. I don't want to get into this too much because this was a big thing I was going to get into on the show, but here I am. I find myself, I cannot help myself. I want to jump into it right now, but I will circle back to some of these statistics in the end here. Um, but look, guys, we we know, we know what the... We know what the big thing that took place this weekend was. Who was the first game to play? Yes, it was the Chiefs. It was the Texans. Now, the 